Hello wonderful humans, it's Steph, I'm back here again, uh, and I'm here today to do a free comic book day 2018 this time, um, haul video I guess? Uh, so if you don't know what free comic book day is, it's uh, once a year, usually the first Saturday of May, actually I think it's always the first Saturday of May, um, comic book stores all around the world um, will do giveaways of um, free comic books to come and support your local comic book store, discover it, meet some new people, and discover some cool comics that you might be into it. And it's great because like all the big like comic book publishers will team up with the organization that does this and um, and they uh, put together this event every year. So free comic book day 2018. So I'm going to show you the whole video. I also I went to three comic book stores, same ones as I did last year in Toronto. Um, don't know if that video exists yet because haha you guys know me, I am terrible of an editing and uploading schedule, so if that video doesn't exist when you watch this, um, uh, it's been a year. <laughs> Good job, me. Um, but there's definitely another one that I recorded from last year, so it may or may not be available depending on when you watch this. Uh, I might upload uh, might upload this one first. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, same ones. So shout out to the Silver Snail, um, the Big Island, and the Page in the Panel, which is also the TCAF, the Toronto Comic Arts Festival shop. Um, so those are the three, myself, and Gail and Alyssa, shout out to you guys, went to, um, yeah, we did a little round Toronto walk, and we went to Krispy Kreme as well, it was a good time, good day. Uh, and then we did the Ryerson University Film Festival afterwards, so that was a, it was a, a crazy, fun, long day. Um, okay, so, I'm gonna start off with the ones that I, we got for free. Well, these are mine. I, all of a sudden, Gail got their own. But, uh, I'm gonna show off the ones that I got for free, and then I'll show you afterwards the ones I bought. So, okay, we're gonna start off with Riverdale. So this is based on the CW show, um, which if you're not familiar with Riverdale, it's based off the Arch Comics. Um, Arch Andrews and his friends, Betty, Veronica, Jughead. Um, and so this, these are, um, this series is uh, like an addition to the show. So uh, if you watch the show, these are stories that you've ever never actually seen on screen. Um, they do it specifically for the, um, for the comic series. And I, so I've actually read all these now that I'm, <laughs> I'm filming this a month after Free Comic Book Day, but that's alright. Uh, it's been very busy around here with uh, the end of semester and starting summer school and all these other things. Um, so, uh, I've read this one already. It's, um, it's like an excer excerpt from the uh, ongoing series of Riverdale. Um, so this is just one of the many stories that they have. And yeah, so it was cool. It was, uh, the story is about um, uh, Pop from... Pop's uh, pop lit shop, shop. I hope I'm saying that right. Like the the, the cool diner that they all go to, like the 1950s feel. And then uh, Betty's interviewing him and um, for a story for their school paper, and um, and he tells him about tells her about all the different interesting characters he's met uh, uh, working at the diner. So that's Riverdale. Uh, I don't know if any of you watch the show. I've seen all of season one, and I have to start season two. There is no time for anything. But yeah, comment below if you like Riverdale, love it, hate it. I love knowing people's opinions, especially about media. So um, let me know what you uh, you think. Uh, and if you don't like it, that's okay too. Just politely explain why. Um, I heard that they did a Carrie episode this year based off of Carrie the uh, Musical, which I like Carrie as a story, but I really like Carrie the Musical. I saw it last year, just over a year ago at Hart House at U of T. So, um, the fact that they're bringing this old musical back and uh, putting it into the show I find really cool. I can't wait to like actually watch the episode. Well, the whole season. I am so behind. But anyway. Alright, so uh, before I continue to talk about Riverdale, let's, uh, let's go to the next one. So I've got a Bob's Burgers comic. Um, and this is the same team that makes the show. Um, and it's short, cute stories that are uh, that you don't see in the show as well. We've got a theme going on, I guess. Um, and... Um, what can I say about this one? Uh, it's just, uh, there were a bunch of shorts in this, um, and it's just different stories about all the different characters, Tina, Bob, uh, Louise, um, <laughs> Des is gonna kill me, I forgot the other two characters, uh, Jean, there we go, and Linda, there we go, uh, Des, my roommate, is a big fan of Bob's Burgers. Um, so yeah, this one's cool, and it was cute stories to see, uh, outside of the show, I've seen a few episodes. Des, you're gonna get to read this after, once I finish this video. <laughs> Um, okay, next one. Um, so we've got an Avengers comic. Uh, shout if any of you saw Infinity War. 
I still haven't seen it. I did see Deadpool 2 though and that was amazing. I love Ryan Reynolds and just the whole Deadpool cast. It's such a smart funny movie that breaks the fourth wall. That's great. Um, so, uh, so this one has both the Avengers, I believe, if I remember what I read like three weeks ago. Yeah, there was also a Captain America short story in here as well. So I'm calling them short stories, but they're they're parts of like larger comics. So a lot of the comics from Free Comic Book Day will be either excerpts or um, or uh, like the first out of a, a new series starting. So this is um, oh okay. wow, it says right there. Um, yeah, Captain America um, story. But yeah, uh, a lot of the uh, comics that you get on Free Comic Book Day are either an excerpt or the um, a uh, overall. Uh, sorry, the first out of a new series. Um, yeah, so this one was just another Avengers fun story to read. Okay. Uh, okay, so the next one is Bongo, which is, uh, Bongo Free For All is a Simpsons comic. So again, um, a story from, uh, a story that you wouldn't see on TV from one of the TV, TV episodes. Um, brought to life on... The page rather than the screen. This one was really cool because this one was like a really thick long one with several different short stories in them um, and they were all colored which is cool. I love I love how like much effort everybody puts into stories for free comic book day. It's great. And just comics overall. Comics don't get enough like love anymore. Uh, okay so a Simpsons one. Okay ooh okay actually I'm gonna put this one and this one for one after another because I'm a big fan of these. Okay, so the first one is Invasion. It's the new um, series about Captain Canuck. And the one that I'm going to follow up is also from the same publisher. And the publisher is Chapter House. And what I love about Chapter House is it's um, it's a Canadian um, comic book publisher. And so they publish Captain Canuck, Pitiful Human Lizard. Shout out to my favorite Toronto superhero. Um, uh, what else? Die Kitty Die, which is the next one that I have down here, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, they do a lot of different Canadian content, and they're like Canada's big publisher, um, and they're just slowly getting bigger, and I love them so much, and I hope that like one day they have the same thing with DC and Marvel, where like they get their own universe of like TV movies and whatever. TV movies? TV and movies, there we go. Um, but yeah, right now they've got their own chapter, I think they call it the Chapterverse, um, and so in this one, uh, Captain Canuck is having to deal with like this alien invasion, hence why it's called Invasion, and um, He's gonna team up with a bunch of the other Chapter House heroes, so yes, you get to see Human Lizard for like two seconds, which is great. Um, and there's other people, um, Agents of Pact, I think. I really need to, okay, I love them. I really do need to jump more into the chapter verse. Um, because all I've read so far are the Die Kitty Dare ones, some of the Captain Connects. I've read one, North Guard, which was really good. I need to read more. Agents of, Agents of Pact, there we go, which is uh, like superheroes. Secret Agent Team Fantama, I hope I'm saying that right. Looks really cool. It like it's supernatural based more. Uh, and then there's my there's my boy, the pitiful human lizard. Or he just likes calling being called the human lizard, but anyway. Um, yes, but Canadians. I love it. Oh, and I just love being able to see like my hometown. <laughs> and just like places I love and know anyway. So uh yeah, uh actually I really do need to start Canadian um, Canadian. <laughs> that's that's how Canadian Galen is, is that I'm, I actually called her Canadian when I meant to say Galen. Galen is really good when it comes to um, Captain Connect and just comics in general. So um, she knows more about Captain Connect than I do. I, I do need to uh, read more about him, which, or his series, so I think this might be a good starting point, but it was a great comic overall. Um, mixing real world things with the chapter verse uh, world, which is cool. And I got to see my favorite, my favorite superhero. Uh, anyway, all right. And the next one from Chapter House is Die Kitty Die. So what's cool about this is, okay, so Die Kitty Die is a series where um, Kitty, she's a witch. So it's kind of thing like Sabrina the Teenage Witch almost feeling vibes. And the reason I bring up Sabrina is the art style looks familiar. It's by two people who have done Archie comics for a very long time. Um, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch is like part of the Archie comics um, group. I am terrible when it comes to comic history, but like that's how much I can explain. Um, but basically, uh, Die Kitty Die is like it's like a love letter slash like fourth wall break slash like kind of like inside jokes to like just comics as like the comic industry. 
and it's basically about this witch who is named Kitty, and um, she had back in the day like this multi like uh, empire of like comics based on her and her life and her adventures, and in like the real world or the world in the comics, like she when you first meet her in the first series, she is um, her fame is slowly dwindling because her comics aren't selling like they used to. Uh, <laughs> it's like all about movies and stuff like that, so hmm, I wonder if that kind of reflects how we are. No, uh, kidding, but um, the, like that's the, that's the point of the series is to point, poke fun at like um, the comic industry and um, like media as a society as a whole. Anyway, so in the first series of her comics is her publisher decides to try to kill her to raise comic book sales. And it's not killing her in the comics, but killing her in real life. So that's the whole first series. And the second series is, um, I think it's called Hollywood or Bust. Oh, it is. Yeah, Hollywood or Bust. There it is. I couldn't see the lettering. But, um, yeah, so the second one is, uh, they go to Hollywood to make a movie based on the comics. Again, sounding very much like the real world. I'm not going to spoil what happens, but this is, uh, this is like a special short story that happens between the second, the end of the second series and um, uh, the beginning of the upcoming third series and it's a cool like story that just happens in between and kind of fills in some of the plot holes up while we're waiting for the third season to happen um, or the third series whatever we'd like to call it um, and yeah uh, Die Cutie Die Heaven or Hell is coming up and I'm really excited for it because it's it just pokes fun at all the like just the all the uh how do I explain it? It just pokes a lot of fun and breaks a lot of fourth walls at, um, at like society, media, and then specifically the comic books, so it's just a great time. So, I uh, would recommend if you want some laughs and, um, and some satire on the comic books as a whole. And yeah, it's a, it's a Chapter House publication, which is great because I really like supporting the, uh, Canadian Chapter House group. Okay, next one. Um, World's Greatest Cartoonists, and this might sound or look familiar from my other video or just if you went to for Comic Book Day in 2017, um, because World's Greatest Cartoonists is a series where they get, uh, comics from, it's a, uh, it's a publication, but they get a bunch of different shorts from different, uh, comic authors and creators, so you end up having multiple little short comics, and it tells you, there's like a table of contents on the first two pages. Um, so you get shorts from different comics, either they're, again, excerpts or, um, or, uh, little sneak peeks of upcoming comic books, and so you get to read, like, little shorts and kind of just get a feel. Uh, and after reading this one, I, uh, I, there's a few books that are in here that are either out already or coming up that I want to check out now because this is kind of like a teaser. Um, so this one was really great. Um, and you get, like, a good, like, there's, like, it's so diverse, you got different types of stories and, like, um, different art styles and um, just different people's voices. So you, it, this one was a really cool one because you get to see different types and, uh, and their job of uh, of advertising other books uh, worked because now I want to go check a few of them out. So uh, yeah, world's, world's greatest cartoonists are pretty darn great. Uh, bad puns with stuff. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, so that one is that, and they did they did one as well last year, and I'm sure they've done it before other years as well. Um, so that was cool. Ha, ah, okay. So, here we go. Another one based off a TV show. Invader Zim. So, if any of you watch this on Nickelodeon or, um, I guess YTV is the Canadian version of Nickelodeon, um, Invader Zim is a comic from Nickelodeon, sorry, not a comic, a cartoon from Nickelodeon about this, uh, alien who invades Earth, aka Invader, um, Invader Zim. Um, that's where he gets his name. So his name's Zim, and he has this uh, robot who dresses up as a dog, and, um, I actually didn't really, I think I saw maybe one episode as a kid. Um, this was just slightly before my time, um, but, uh, I know, I know several people, especially people's older siblings, have watched this show, and, uh, I should, I've heard it's really good, so I really should go watch it and, like, just watch old episodes. Um, but this is again a little short comic that doesn't happen in the uh, in the uh, TV show that they just made up, and it's kind of funny and cute. Uh, where basically the plot of the show is Invader Zim is always trying to invade Earth and like take over the Earth, um, and he has to deal with. I know there's like some there's this one kid who's like into aliens or whatever, and he he knows like he he's the only one in town who knows that Zim is like an alien. 
um, because he poses as a human. Um, so it's just, it, that's what the show's about, is <laughs> invaders and trying to take over the earth. Um, but yeah, so this is just another another short story about him trying to take over and uh, the hijinks he gets up in, uh, gets into. Um, yeah, and I heard that they're doing a reboot. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, that, so I should, if there is, I definitely, like, I already have to go watch it, but if there's going to be a reboot, I should probably definitely go uh, go watch the old ones. I know that there's, a, like, a big fan base for this, and, um, and, uh, that there's a big fan base for this, so definitely if it comes back, then, like, I should probably get on that, get on that bandwagon, because apparently it's a really good show. Um, I was gonna say, uh, because I've mentioned a bunch of ones that are based off of TV shows, um, you don't necessarily need to see the TV show to get the comic, or, like, to understand the comic. Um, there's, like, in this one, there was, like, a little prologue. Um, explaining like everything you need to know about Invader Zim and um, yeah and it was just a cute funny funny little story um, and actually this one poked a lot of fun at a lot of TV shows and like TV tropes and like just the TV industry so that was fun and cool too okay hmm okay I'm gonna leave this one for last because I actually bought a comic based off of that you'll see that in a second okay um, this one was cool okay um, Howard Lovecraft, Big Book of Summer Fun. So I didn't know what this was about at all. I just picked it up uh, because different stores let you pick up a certain amount of comics. Um, so this I just had picked up all the ones that I wanted to read and then I was like, this looks cool. You know, I'll get to my limit by picking up random ones that just look appealing and I'll you know give them a shot. And this was cool. So um, Howard Lovecraft, you might know, is the author of like a lot of scary shorts, uh, scary stories. Um, his One of his most famous ones is uh, the Cthulhu stories about the demon god Cthulhu. I'm probably explaining that really wrong, but anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically this um, this comic is based off of an animation company and the animation company has made a bunch of short stories about the young child uh, of Howard Lovecraft, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, as you might know him. So uh, there's this animation company has made, I think, three movies now, three animated films. Um, based off of the ideas of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, yes, okay, H.P. Lovecraft, or Howard Lovecraft in the Frozen Kingdom, and the Undersea Kingdom, and then there's a third one coming, it was saying. Uh, there was a whole, there was a whole letter here. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was cool to see. Um, first off, I love, like, literature, so just, uh, getting to see, like, I like when people reimagine, like, old literature, like, the updated Sherlock, uh, BBC Sherlock series, for example, um, or just when you take, like, old, um, old, uh, ideas, um, and just revamping them. They're, it's always cool to see what people's interpretations of famous stories are. So this was interesting to look at, and, uh, there's, like, two movies out, so maybe if I ever have the chance to see them, I might give one a shot, because it looked interesting enough. I think it's more kid-based, but anyway, I still like animated short or animation a lot, because I cannot draw, so, um, I really always appreciate people and like just animated films in general. It also takes a ridiculous amount of time to animate things, so bless, bless all of the animators out there. Um, okay, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can even name the company or tell you more about the comic itself. Ah, The Kingdom of Madness is the third one coming out. There was the third one coming out. Um, Arcana Studios, the studio. Okay, there we go. But um, yeah, it's so basically, kid. The kid version of H.P. Lovecraft goes on creepy adventures. It was cool. It was cute to. It was cute to read. Oh, do, 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 do. I just realized how bright this light is. Anyway, okay. And because I am a child, and I was just talking about how great animation is. Ah, Disney Princess. This was just a cute like. It's a, a whole bunch of like stories, short stories on uh, Ariel. Cute little comic shorts on Ariel and the her undersea friends, Flounder and Sebastian and all that. So that was cute. Not much to say for that one, it was just a bunch of Little Mermaid shorts. Um, ooh, okay, this one, I was really excited because I read one before, okay, I'm gonna pull it out and show you what the heck I'm talking about first. So this is Lady Mechanica. Uh, I really want, I like sci-fi and steampunk and stuff like that, and this one is, okay. Um, this is a big series, I know that there are at least like four volumes, I think, I'm pretty sure there's at least four volumes at this point now. Yes, okay. It, it says in the back. There's at least four volumes now. Um, and a mini series. I read one of, they were doing, sometimes they do other free comic book events throughout the year, so I, for Halloween they were giving out a, so a few short horror comics, uh, which one of them was 
uh, Eleni, Me Eleni Mechanica one, and so this is a series that I really need to get into because it, looks, it just looks so interesting. And it's about this girl who, um, I believe she hunts, I could be wrong, but she, I read this, or, like, it's sad that I read this and already forgot what it's about, but, um, it's about a girl who, uh, is some kind of, like, creature, um, which is, like, she's part mechanic, mechanical, which, Lady Mechanica, there's the name, um, and, uh, it takes place in, like, eight, the 1800s, which, yeah, okay, it makes sense, because it's steampunk, um, and she, like, hunts monsters, but she's also trying to figure out, like, who she is, why she's, like, part machine, like, who her creator is, and just trying to solve all the mysteries around why and who she is as a being. Uh, and so this, this, uh, this comic here actually gives you the first, um, a story from the first volume and a story from the second volume. So you get two different time periods, and it's just, it's gorgeous, the anime, like, the, the, uh, the, uh, the cartoons in this is just, oh my gosh. Like the dress, look at that. And like all the steampunk outfits, this is great. Um, the art is just gorgeous. And then look at that, she's being a badass and like she's uh, crashing through a window. Um, anyway, so this one looks really good. It was a fun, like I can't tell you much more because I'm not familiar with the series other than uh, she's trying to solve the mystery of who she is. But uh, I, it's it's a big series. It's there. They've got at least four volumes out plus a mini series and um, I definitely want to read more. Um, so this, good job, good job for a comic book day. You did your job. Now I'm gonna go check out this series. Anyway, so uh, if I get around to reading it, which I hope so to do soon in the future, um, then I'll uh, maybe I'll do a uh, review on that. Comment below. Wow, I really do sound like a YouTuber. Comment below if you'd like me to do a video on that. There you go. Okay. Um, are you ready, kids? Because there was a Spongebob comic this year. Actually, I'm pretty sure there was a Spongebob comic last year as well. More fun stories from Bikini Bottom. Plankton tries to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula again. Um, there's a uh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy um, plot at one point. I think there's also like a short little bit. Yeah, Patrick. And they also incorporate comics into this, into this like specific comic. So that was fun to see. Yeah. And there were two different, there's some different art styles. So you've got... You've got this really detailed version, and then you have this, uh, I don't know if you can even see it, and my camera does not autofocus because it's a specific lens I'm using, so I don't know if that was even blurry, but anyway. Um, and there's this one, which is more like a crude drawing, but I love it. It's just Patrick. Patrick and Spongebob loving comics, it's great. Anyway, yeah, so there was a Spongebob comic and it was fun. Aye aye, Captain! Anyway, okay. Uh, there are two more than that one that I skipped that I'm going to come back to, and then we get into the stuff that I bought. So, almost done. Or at least more than halfway there, that's for sure. Uh, okay, so, this one is, um, Defend the, Help the CBLDF, uh, Defend Comics. They did one of these last year as well, um, and it's, again, another bunch of shorts. And, um, so the different art they got, again, kind of like the greatest, uh, world's greatest cartoonists, they did, uh, a bunch of different, uh, authors doing different shorts. Um, and this one has more political tones to it. Um, the first, the very first one, Claudette Shuts Up, is, uh, was about, um, free speech. And it was just really cute because it's like, I know this is like, again, they're taking characters from other stories. Um, but, uh... So I don't know too much about this, but um, it looks like these medieval little kids are uh, uh, are playing, and then Claudette is like talking, is like starting like a little revolution. And anyway, the whole it ends up being about free speech, and it was really cute between kids and um, standing up for what's right. So that was cute. Some really great art in this. There's this one. What's this one called? Chasma Knights. So these are all based off of. Uh, or either excerpts or again based off of uh, other comics. Sometimes they do for free comic book day. Look, they'll, they'll have like authors create like brand new stories just for the free comic day, uh, book day publications. There's another one in here about free speech. This one I want to read now. Uh, if you know me, I like anything like supernatural, fantasy, whatever. So this one is the creepy case files of Margot Malou, which is about. Uh, humans and monsters like living in the same universe and like they, so there's it's a human and uh, and I think she's a vampire um, I think yeah, I think she's a vampire and uh, She's bringing this human friend along for them to solve cases and that's pretty that's pretty funny 
Um, yeah, so. Oh, here we go. Um, Margot Malou, Chasma Knights, I can say it was by the same author as Crafty Cat. Um, Claudette Shuts Up is like a whole series about Claudette. Um, there was uh, John Patrick Green con uh, contributed and Tiger vs. Nightmare was another short one in here. So there we go. So yeah, and this one is always about free speech uh, and they're like more political but uh, also just as important. Um, yes, anyway. I like uh, I like that this that this one and the uh, the world's greatest cartoonists both have shorts and different uh, have different uh, like authors so you get to kind of just see different short books and stories and art styles and then you find other ones that you might want to read so now I'm gonna now I've added to Goodreads please uh, please remind me that I want to read Margot Malou because that looks sick the next one I'm gonna talk about just before we get to the last one of the freebies is everyone's favorite half Halloween half Christmas movie The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, and they're gonna, they're, this is actually part, the, the not the first, this is actually the Zero edition, number Zero, which is gonna be like this prologue, pre-story kind of thing to the new series called Zero's Journey, which is actually gonna be not starring Jack, but Zero, um, the dog, Jack's dog, and, um, and, um, the, the plot of this upcoming series, which I believe is also, it is manga, right? Yeah, it's manga. Uh, it's actually gonna be read from, uh, right to left rather than left to right. Um, so if you flip it around, it, it actually reads backwards. Um, and uh, so if you if you read a uh, Japanese manga, you're, you're okay if you're, you're used to this. Um, but uh, anyone who hasn't, totally easy to read. You just reverse the order and it's totally fine. Um, give it a try, it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're basically, um, I don't know if the whole series is gonna be like this, but basically this sets up the, ne the upcoming series and it's uh Zero's gonna go on his own journey through different uh to at least uh, at least one other town other than Halloween Town um and I won't tell you anything more than that because I don't want to spoil it, spoil it but uh yeah this is it's a cute I've seen that movie at least twice um and if you're a fan of the movie uh apparently this is gonna be really good oh they already have oh it's issue one available now there you go so uh issue one in the series is already available there you go um, so if you're a fan of Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, check this out because it was cute to read and I definitely want to read, like, the upcoming series now. I believe it's going to be, I think they wrote, did they put a letter? Some of the, some of these comics have letters to explain. Yes, a message, here we go. 20 issue series. Okay, so this is an upcoming series that... Collect 20 issues, compiled four graphic novels, and then will eventually be in one massive collector's edition manga. Um, okay. Yeah, so if you're a fan of the series, you might want to check this out. Or, sorry, a fan of the movie, you might want to check it out. And I think I would like to uh, read this. I don't know if it's going to be like every month or every few weeks or whatnot. Um, comics, for those of you who don't know, comics get released on a different, like, they're all dependent on their schedules. Most of the comics I read are like every once every month. Um, but yes, there's that. And okay. So, I'm going to get last for this one. Shout out to Krita. Krita, you already know what I'm going to pull out. Uh, the final free comic book from Free Comic Book Day that I got was, um, or like that I got for free and then I'll show you the ones I bought, is Miraculous. Oh, <laughs> Miraculous. Simply the best. Da -na 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 -na. Okay, so if you don't know what Miraculous is, um, the subtitle is Adventures of Lady Bug and Cat Noir. Um, it's a kid's show, but... Uh, hold your thoughts. Spongebob is also a kid show and you all have, you all love it. Okay, so Krita, my neighbor, shout out to Krita, um, showed me this show, and this is the most ridiculous, ha, to quote Chloe, one of the characters in the show, this is the most ridiculous show ever. It's, it's a French show, but it's got ha heavy Japanese anime influences, and then it's part of the anime, or most of the animation, something like that, is done in Korea. Um, and then it became so popular on the other side of the world that it get, came over here and now it's very popular like all around the world and like uh, they've started doubling, dubbing it in English um, so everybody on the side of the world can also watch it and all around the world can watch it because it's been translated to so many different languages and it's basically this um, it's it's a mad it's a magical girl genre so if you do if if you know what like for example Sailor Moon um, that's a kind of like anime trope where basically there's like a usually it's a girl but in this you've also you've got a girl and a guy um 
Okay, how do I explain? Okay, for Sailor Moon, you've got this girl who's like this ordinary girl, Serena, or Usagi, depending on if you're going with the English or the Japanese uh, version. And um, she meets Luna the cat and gets like this this brooch and you know, she, get, she ends up being able to transform to Sailor Moon, save the day, she becomes a superhero. So that's the idea of the magical girl genre kind of, uh, where you're basically able to transform into a superhero and there's, there's usually a quest or all these other elements. Um, and um, so yeah, like one of the most well-known magical girls is Sailor Moon. So this is the same kind of idea, basically. Um, this girl here is Ladybug, this guy here is Cat Moore. Um, spoiler alert, not really. This is Marinette and this is uh, Adrian. Um, they don't know that though. There's an ongoing, the, we're on the second season and they still don't know, at the time of me recording this, they still don't know who each other is. They keep that a secret throughout the, from each other throughout the show and from everybody else. Um, and they basically are able, they get these little uh, creatures, they meet these little creatures named Kwamis. Um, Kwamis, saying that again, in case you didn't understand the first time. Um, and uh, they also get these things called miraculouses, which are little objects. So for her, it's these la these ladybug earrings, and for him, it's this, you can't see it in the picture, but um, he has a ring, uh, and uh, between the, the pieces of jewelry and the... Um, and the Kwamis, they're able to transform into the superheroes and they save all of Paris and there's this evil guy named Hawk Moth, who, yeah, Hawk Moth, I know, um, who uses his powers to make somebody his, like, slave, servant, evil, doer, minion kind of thing. Um, and basically, between Hawk Moth and whoever he makes evil for that episode, they attack Paris, yeah, it, it takes place in Paris, France, and, um, and, uh, and uh, what happens? And they, these two basically have to always save the day. And the first season was very repetitive again. It's a kid show, but weirdly enough, most of the uh, the fans for this are like teenagers and twenty somethings. So I don't feel as completely re completely ridiculous. Anyway, um, and actually, but like it's starting it's starting to get to be one of those cartoons that are like progressive and like when it comes to plot and stuff like that, and is becoming way more mature than I think it originally was set out to be. Um, and, um, what can I say about this? Kind of like, if a lot of people who say if you like Steven Universe or Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Gravity Falls, you're gonna, there's a good chance you might like this show. So give it a shot. The first season's pretty repetitive, but then the second, we're on the second season and it's getting really good. Um, so if, yeah, if you like superheroes, magical girl, magical girl genre, or any of those cartoons I just listed, um, this is like one of those more cartoons that has become more mature. Not in the like family guy, like crude humor sense, but more in the like good stories with character development sense. So yeah, give it a chance, would highly recommend. And thank you, Krita, for <laughs> making, ruining my life by giving me yet another show to obs obsess over. That was the last one from Free Comic Book Day that I got uh, from a freebie. But now I'm gonna go on to the few, I just bought a few things. Um, so to continue with Miraculous, I also bought the, uh, I've been waiting a while for this, uh, they have a, um, a, like, a, a series going on top of the show, so, like, stories that don't happen in the show they've made comics for, um, so, uh, I've already now explained the show to you, but I just, I ended up buying, waited a while for this to go on sale. A lot of the, um, stories will do, like, the free comics, but they'll also have, like, events going on or sometimes sales, so, yeah, waited for free comic book days to be able to buy a few things on sale, so, got Miraculous, um, the first volume of, I think, four? I think it was four different, uh, four different stories that were collected into one, or four, the four, oh yes, here we go, collects issues one to four, it's on the back. Um, so there's an ongoing series in addition to the TV show and, uh, the first four are collected into this book. So there we go. Um, again, if you, if any of those things I just mentioned sound appealing, give Miraculous a try. Don't know. Might be something that you get to obsess over. Okay. Um, okay. Descender. I've talked about this before, um, between probably the Fan Expo video or, did I know what it was last, last free comic book day? I don't think I had started this reading this yet because I read it for last year's summer. Okay, so, all right, let me explain this. Okay, <laughs> last year I did a summer school course um, to get ahead, and it was like this this uh, this English class. Um, I forget what the exact title was, but it was like a sci-fi literature class. So, um, and our, our professor, she's really cool. She had um, 
she her her doctorate is in comic books so she incorporated a comic book into like in addition to all the other books we were reading and uh that series of comic books was descender and okay so descender is about um about this uh this little robot boy right here named 1021 actually what's funny about this i think they're supposed to be parroting um uh where the wild things are from the cover here and like with the crown he's wearing that's what it reminds me of so i believe that's what they're parroting um but basically, uh, 1021 is this robot who, at one point in time, the Earth, um, or just, like, the universe, like, lived in harmony, aliens, robots, and humans, like, all just chilled out together, and, um, then these things called the Harvesters came, and they, uh, destroyed, um, the Earth, and, like, the Harvesters were, like, these massive, like, war robot things, um, and they just, uh, right, like, right after they destroyed, like, a bunch of, like, uh, planets and stuff and caused a lot of havoc they disappeared and so for 10 like when the story starts when you start reading the very first comic it's been 10 years since those events have happened and um robots are now outlawed anyway so 1021 wakes up from this like sleep and now his they believe he could be the key to figure out what these harvesters were and like saving the universe so there's a bunch of different groups who are after him um there's like the the Galactic Council, Council, I, ah, I forgot what they were called. They're like, they have a specific like acronym for them. Do, 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 do. Let me see if I can find them. United Galactic Council, so UGC. Um, so that's one group who's after him. There's like people who just don't want him like existing because he's a robot. Um, and all, there's all these other groups and I don't want to spoil it, but it's a really good series. And we had to read the first six. So it was like a collected volume like a collected volume, like one of these bigger books. Um, but it's, it's a collected, I, we had to read the first collected volume, so six short comics in it, and it's so good. The, this is number 29, so it's, uh, it's a good series. Would highly would recommend. What's cool about Jeff Lemire is, so he's from Toronto. Um, I'm pretty sure he's from Toronto. He's definitely Canadian, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, I believe he's specifically from Toronto. And um, so he does like, he does stuff like for like the big guys, like. Um, DC and Marvel, but he's also done like several series on the side where like, um, or like not on the side, but he has so many different series going at once. So he's got Descender going and Descender's still, I don't know how long Descender's going to go on for if it's like, if they have a plan for the end or not. I have no idea. Um, I know this one is first out of four, like for the next, he's, he's beginning to split the story into like different bits and pieces. So there's going to be at least three more after this. Um, and, um, but there's one that I want to read, and it's called AD, which is After Death. And here, there's actually a, there's an ad for it at the back of this book. Um, and the tagline is literally, what if we found a cure for death? Um, so that one's cool. Again, like, kind of have, like, sci-fi vibes in it. Um, I heard that Royal City, also by him, is really good, so I apparently need to read that one as well. It never ends. There's just so much to read. Gideon Falls, also by him, I was told was good. I have no idea what it's about, but apparently it's good, so I'm down. I'm done for anything. Please send me your, uh, send me your, uh, recommendations. This is cool. This is not by him, but there, there's something in here called Prism, Stalker Prism, which, um, Image, Com Image, yeah, Image Comics, which publishes, um, Descender, uh, is advertising, and it says Octavia Butler and Sailor Moon meets the biopunk horror of David Cronenberg. Sounds sick. Um, okay, anyway. So yeah, Descender, would highly recommend. Good series. Again, only had to read the first six for school, and I'm on 29. Well, I finished 29, so I'll be on 30 when 30 comes out, which I think it already came out as of me recording this. Just haven't had a chance to go out, grab it, and read it. Um, okay, so that was that one. And now, I'm getting to the last two that I bought, and then I also bought some pins, but we'll get there in a second. The last two I bought, from the same series, and I'm smiling, some of you remind, uh, may know this. You remind me of the bay. What bay? Bay with the power. What power? Anyway, okay. It's it's for it's labyrinth. <laughs> I love labyrinth. Okay, um, 1986, I think. I should check that right now because it's gonna bother me throughout the rest of this video if I don't remember what, um, what your labyrinth is from. But uh, you, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, basically. 1986, I was right. Yeah, I know my 80s movies, I don't. But anyway, I know Labyrinth, okay. Basically, David Bowie plays this uh, this character called the Goblin King, his name's Jareth. Um, a very young Jennifer Connelly uh, accidentally wishes her baby brother, 
who she's sick of babysitting away to like this magical creature she, who she thought was fake or like, you know, just a legend, the Goblin King, who next thing you know, David Bowie appears in her house and is like, if you want your baby brother back, you better go run through my labyrinth and solve it in 13 hours and then you can get my ba your baby brother back. So she goes on this quest to uh, save her brother. And um, so they've started um, this series called Labyrinth, specifically Coronation. Um, and um, it's the story, like the pre-story to how Jareth became the Goblin King. Um, so this is number two and three. I've read the first one already. Oh, I've read these, like I've read these now too. But um, uh, basically this, this series is, it's, this story is set up during the movie, movie's events, and it's Jareth telling Toby, Sarah's little brother, Jennifer Connelly's like little brother, um, like to entertain the baby while he's like chilling out and just watching him while he waits for Sarah to like attempt to solve his labyrinth. Um, he's telling the story of how he became who he is to this baby. So that's, that's how they set up this story is like Jareth narrating, explaining his past. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I want to say any more than that because it will ruin it. But, um, yeah, so basically I'm not going to actually, yeah, I won't say any more, but it's, I'm on, I've finished the third one. There's a fourth one that I think just came out like last week. Again, I need to go pick that up. Um, but it's really good. If you're a fan of Labyrinth, if you're a fan of the movie, um, there's lots of little like movie references to this, but there's also a fresh new story. And since this movie has came back out is <laughs> from the 80s and they didn't make a sequel although I heard that there's like a reboot or a sequel or something in the works and a Broadway show that'd be sick bless David Bowie ripped him uh wish he was still here to do something with that but uh we shall continue Labyrinth for him um yeah but uh if you're a fan of the movie I think you'll enjoy these um you get a new fresh Labyrinth story with uh uh pokes at the old one and like little references to, to like the to the, the, uh, the movie, the original movie. Okay, so that's all the comics that I got from Comic Book Day. That was a lot. And uh, last thing I did buy were pins. So the first thing I bought was a silver snail pin, which is actually from last year. Like, they still had them in store, a few left. Um, and it was from their, um, their, uh, last year was their 41st year. And this year they were celebrating their 42nd anniversary. Um, and so I had bought one of these pins, I like I have an animal pin collection, and I had bought one of these last year, and I lost it. It was on my, I have a lanyard with uh, a whole bunch of uh, pins on it, and I stopped wearing it because one, it's very heavy, to, like, to have them, and then my keys on them. Uh, so I've just, uh, and then I lost this one, and I almost lost the second one, even though it's got a pretty good backing, it still managed to come off this one day. So I um, ended up buying... A replacement one and now I don't wear the lanyard anymore it's just sitting there to like on display for my collection because I do not want to lose another one um so yeah so I bought a silver snail anniversary pin number 110 out of 300 that were made I have a pin for the beguiling a pin for the silver snail and I felt like I needed to get one because I've gone to the vision panel a few times like enough times that I that I consider them a repeat customer. So I got a little Toronto Comic Arts Festival TCAF pin with, within a speech bubble. So if any of you know me personally, uh, you might know that I am a big fan of Welcome to Night Vale. So if you don't know what Welcome to Night Vale is, it's a podcast where um, it's set up, like there's different types of podcasts, but this one is like a fictional one that's set up like you're listening to a local radio station of the small town called Night Vale, which is in a desert somewhere in the US. They never specify where. And uh, there's just weird things that happen in the town all the time. Um, like for example, um, there's a dog park. Humans aren't allowed in the dog park. Dogs aren't allowed in the dog park. Only these hooded figures are allowed into the dog park. Wait a minute, there is no dog park. I, w I didn't say anything. Shh. That's, that's my best way to explain what Night Vale is. It's just this weird town that happens where all the weirdest things happen. Um, but it's, it's, because you're listening to the radio station, it sounds like, what's, what's funny about them is like, they just, they report these things like it's an everyday occurrence. Like, so to us, it's very strange and like interesting and to them, it's just like a run of the mill day. Um, and uh, it's just really funny. And then like the weather, when they announce the weather, it's not like a weather report that comes on, but rather a song. And um, 
I've seen their, they've, it's funny because you can't see it because the camera's like in front of it, but on the wall where the camera is, um, I actually have my, my poster from the first time I ever went to see a, live, uh, a Night Fail vale, um, live show because they do live shows and tours. Um, and signs in a frame. Anyway, that was a good time several summers ago. Man, it's been four years. Jeez. Okay. Almost four years since I saw that show. Anyway, um, but yeah, they do live shows. I've seen three of them so far and uh, they're great. reason I bring up Welcome to Night Vale is um, they had a pin for sale in uh, the teacaf shop, the shop, uh, the page in the panel store. Um, and it's the All Hail the Glow Cloud pin. And um, unfortunately, I'm in Canada, so there's it's really um, frustrating to, to have to like pay American and shipping on top for uh, anything Night Vale related. So, uh, saw this pen, I was like, I'm buying this because I don't have to pay uh, extra <laughs> for it being in another country. Um, so yes, someone bought the pen and I guess they resold it and I picked it up and I'm going to lovingly put it on my uh, lanyard. So my last thing I got was a Sailor Moon pen and uh, it's specifically Sailor Venus. And um, if you look really closely, you're not gonna be able to see it from here or probably from there. I don't know how long that, like, that, that probably went out of focus when I put my hand that way, but um, it, if you look and if you pay really close attention to it, it's um, the anime, like the animation feels uh, feels look, and looks more 90s, like from when the show came out. And that's because it is. They had a vintage pin. Apparently some of the staff had gone to, I didn't know this was a thing that the, the people from Page in the Panel do, but um, they went to Japan and they apparently go on a trip every year and they bring back like supplies and um, they had a bunch of Sailor Moon pins, like, of different characters. Um, they were vintage and they're from, like, when the show came out. So this is from the 90s. This is, like, at least 20 years old. Um, and, um, and it was from Japan. I was like, okay, whoa, this is, this is one, a vintage pin and a, uh, and all the way from Japan. I would, I would love to go see, like, Tokyo and just explore Japan someday. So I was like, I'm definitely getting this. Um, yeah, so, and I love, Sailor Moon is, like, was my first, like, well, like was my show as many as for many people it was my introduction to anime um and it's just a great show and it was like my it was my superhero show as a kid so had to could not pass up on this opportunity thank you so much for watching i hope you uh maybe you learned something uh, about comics from this uh, maybe you have some new uh ideas of things to read maybe you can down below t if you want to free comic book day tell me what you got and we can compare notes um if you're looking for a new series, maybe I've like sparked your interest in a few new series. I've definitely walked away from Free Comic Book Day um, looking to read a few more ones, uh, especially from those two world's greatest com uh, world's greatest cartoonists and uh, the um, the Defend Comics one. Thanks for watching. I'm I'm Steph. Uh, do all those things. Click all those buttons, and I'll see you next time. I have an idea that pops out of my head and can be captured with a camera. Okay, bye, friends. Thank you, wonderful humans. Bye.